Yeah, good evening, everyone. Um, welcome to Komodo Space Liberty Fest. This is your first one. I'm sure you'll be back. I hope you're having a, a great weekend. Um, as it, before I get into this, uh, I, I want to ask a couple of questions. Uh, raise your hand if you've, ever, if you've ever voted in an election. Yeah, pretty much it. Okay, so yeah, pretty much everybody. I voted once in 2012, so for those who didn't raise their hand, I uh, wish I could <laughs> have that uh, get clean record. But uh, second question, raise your hand if you've ever run for office. Okay, couple, couple, all right. <clears throat> now, honestly, how many of you can safely say that either of those things have actually brought you more tangible freedom in, in your own life? Okay, I figured there'd be one. <laughs> Okay, so I guess uh, I'll preface this with my experiences uh, with reformism with the political means. Uh, in 2012, I, it was the only time I voted, and I canceled my voter registration. Uh, in 2014, I participated in overpasses, uh, overpasses for Obama's impeachment. If you guys have heard of that, I did that once, unfortunately. Uh, I've got a picture of that one. But uh, the only other form of uh, reformism or the political means that I, that I participated in I led an informational protest against the war on drugs, and uh, yeah, I mean, obviously, I got to talk to people, which I mean, that's always that's always fun. But we're on a college campus, so you're talking about legalizing marijuana. Obviously, they're going to be good. They're going to be good with that. Uh, but it, it wasn't anything significant. I had a lot of business cards. Um, a lot of people get in contact with me, but it didn't do anything. It really didn't do anything. So I can't. I, I can honestly say that anything regarding politics has never uh, increased uh, the freedom in my life. And that's kind of what put me on this journey to actually try to find real solutions on finding freedom right now without asking for permission. So I guess uh, most of you probably don't know who I am, so I'll start with that. Uh, my name is Shane Radliff. I'm a 24-year-old uh, college student, a higher level indoctrination. Uh, I live in central Illinois, uh, majoring in journalism and minoring in philosophy. And uh, I guess uh, other than my uh, work in the alternative media, um, I don't really have a lot of other interests. I, I enjoy uh, camping and riding, so things like this are, are fantastic. Um, and uh, we, we own some property in southern Illinois, and one of the, my favorite things to do is to float four-wheelers down creeks and such. So um, that's, that's what I do in my spare time. I'll be doing that next weekend, actually. All right, so I guess my, my work in the alternative media, I'm the founder of Liberty Under Attack and the host of LEA Radio. We're live every Sunday and Thursday at 7 p.m. Central Time uh, at parentradio.com. Uh, I'm a contributor to the Conscious Resistance uh, run by Derek Bros. Most of you probably know who he is. Uh, he's, he's, pretty, he's, he's, out there, he's out there a lot. I'm a contributor to the Odyssey, which that's not really much to say. Uh, it's, if, if you don't know what that is, it's a, it's a millennial social media platform, essentially. So I, I wanted to go on there because uh, most, most of the stuff on there is just status is all hell. So I figured uh, got to go on there and spread some anarchism. Um, I'm also an independent publisher of audiobooks and anthologies. Uh, all of those are available free at the uh, Liberty Under Attack website. There's a ton of stuff on there. I have two anthologies on there. A uh, colleague, Kyle Rudin, has a couple on there. Um, did one for Gustavo Molinari's production of Security. Um, just a bunch of stuff there. It's all available for free. So if you want to check those out, they're on YouTube as well. And now for the main events. So, the Freedom Umbrella of Direct Action. Before I begin, uh, how many of you ever listened to the show, or uh, the Direct Action series? Yeah. Uh, day pass. <laughs> okay, good deal. So this, this will be some fresh material. Except for you, Dave. Uh, okay, so, so what is the FUDA? I'm FUDA for short. Well, it is a value-free directory of the economic means. And what I mean by that is, our subjective uh, preferences or value judgments, there's none of that. So these are just, this is just a list of all of the economic means solutions, so everything outside of politics. Uh, recently, we just released the third edition. Um, we didn't really do much to it. We removed a couple that were questionable and um, relabeled some categories and things. So uh, as per the trivia method, one thing on the freedom of direct action, uh, let's, let's define our terms. So what are the political means? Uh, well, I'll, as Albert Paynock put it, uh, the uncompensated appropriation of wealth by others. Uh, so that would be uh, the beer political crusading, you know, voting right for office, grassroots lobbying, the bureaucratic positions, uh, all of those sorts of things. That would be the political means. 
So what are the economic means? Oh, okay. yeah. <laughs> well, uh, Albert A. Nock put it as the production and exchange of wealth. You know, your free market capitalism, whatever you want to call it, uh, just voluntary exchange. That is the, the economic means. I was searching and I found that, I did a Google search and I found this image and it's just so bad. Uh, we had Sarah Palin, she believes in free market capitalism. Uh, I guess not, <laughs> I guess excluding all the fascism that she participates in. But. So, uh, in other words, it's direct action. It's direct action. Uh, all of the voluntary ways to exercise your freedom now, without asking for permission. So, I guess some of you may be asking, well, why does this matter? Why should I care about this? Well, I know as, as anarchists, a lot of things that we do, I mean, I, I, I spend a lot of time doing this, hello, it's a radio show. Um, we spend a lot of time trying to win hearts and minds. Um, and a lot of a lot of the resistance that, that, that I guess that I've come across, I'm sure you guys have too, is uh, you, you tell someone that uh, um, that voting doesn't work or, or, or things of that nature, and they're like, well, if I don't vote, then what can I do? Uh, it's something I've come across very, very frequently, and for the longest time, I didn't have I didn't have an answer. Um, so this this uh, reduces opportunity costs. Uh, rather than uh, voting, uh, running for office takes a lot of time, a lot of time, money, and effort, and they really haven't uh, done anything to increase increase uh, uh, personal freedom, at least in my life, and I'm sure some of you some of you agree with that. The food provides real potential solutions in finding freedom now, uh, whereas the political means, as I said before, they they've never they've never done it. And most importantly, if you listen to Elliot Radio, uh, you know we talk a lot about consistency, um, like Samuel Conkin talked about back in uh, back in the '80s. Uh, there's no compromising on principles. Uh, now I know some, some people disagree with this, but uh, I don't like the idea of voting. Uh, I think it's a violation of non-aggression principle and things, but um, so for me this is the most important one. There's no compromising on principles. Um, so what was the purpose of, uh, so, so we, we had this list of like a hundred solutions, and uh, there was a project by a, a, a few other people and myself, and I realized that I didn't know what some of these things were, and, and obviously if you don't know what something is, you can't utilize it in your own life. So I, I, I thought about it and I said, okay, what about the Direct Action Series? Uh, so the Direct Action Series, uh, the purpose was to explore as many of those options that are available on the Freedom Umbrella of Direct Action, and I guess try to get a better understanding, and I people who specialize in, in whatever, whatever respective strategy. So I started on January 3rd of this year, and it just ended last month. So this is a quite quite a long endeavor. Uh, so it, it really did show the I guess the sheer variety that direction has direct action has to offer, rather than the political means. Which I mean, there's a five ten something like that. Uh, whereas on the food, there's almost a hundred, if not more than a hundred. So there's a lot of a lot of stuff on there. So I guess just uh, some people that we did interview on the direct action series, uh, Brett Benant. Uh, we discussed uh, strategic withdrawal, uh, cutting ties to the state. Uh, more specifically, with this specialty, we discussed uh, uh, trying to uh, trying to convince those in our in our personal lives to stop being government indoctrinators, essentially. Uh, so that's what we talked with him about. Uh, we talked to Derek Rose. I mentioned him earlier. We had him on for agorism uh, and freedom cells. Uh, we had on uh, Daryl Becker uh, from Voluntary Visions to discuss nonviolent communication and the trivium. Um, and then we had on Lenore Skenazy. It was a short interview, but uh, uh, she gave us uh, her thoughts on free range parenting, uh, which is one thing on the FUDA. And there's just Danny. I figured I'd go ahead and toss him in there. <laughs> All right, and probably, probably the one I'm most excited about. I'm sure, and I, I point this out specifically because I'm sure a lot of you have never heard of this. And I hadn't before a few months earlier as well. Uh, there's a book called Bonnie the Search for Personal Freedom. And uh, I came across this book from, uh, through a colleague and uh, looked intriguing. So I went and bought it off Amazon. It's a, it's a pretty rare book, so it was expensive. Uh, but uh, I, I read it and uh, I realized how important this book really is. Uh, so for those who, who don't know, uh, it's a, Bonnie was a, a collection of articles written by Rayo. Obviously, that's a pseudonym. Uh, from the early 60s to the mid 70s. Uh, it incorporates a number of strategies already on the FUDA. Uh, so there's things like uh, homesteading. Uh, he, he began uh, RV living uh, in, public, in public lands. So you can stay there typically for two weeks and you have to move. So he just got in his RV and just moved around a ton. 
And uh, then he, uh, <laughs> this probably seems unconventional for, for, for a lot of us, but uh, yeah, he just went and lived on like a national forest land, and what he lived in was a polypropylene A tent. So like, even less than you have on your tents. So it's just kind of, uh, <laughs> just kind of a canopy, essentially. Uh, and that's, that's where he lived. Uh, so the first part of the book is, is obviously theory, which is, it's, it's libertarianism in the 60s and 70s. Uh, and it's really interesting to see the parallels that what he was facing then and what, what I see um, facing now. So it's, uh, it's, it's definitely, definitely interesting. Uh, so what I did was I transcribed the entire book and put it up on the website. And uh, uh, however, and I did an audio book for it. And that is available for free as well. Uh, tinyurl.com forward slash Bonnie Rayo. Definitely recommend uh, uh, everyone uh, check that out. Uh, definitely an important book. So again, why, why are the Food on the Red Action series so important? And I'll reiterate this point over and over again because I, think, I, I do think it is uh, an important one to make. Essentially, the, the Food on the Direct Action uh, series, uh, the FUDA provides these solutions and the Direct Action series gives you the information to actually in, uh, implement these things into your own life. I know we didn't cover all of them. Um, obviously, when you're trying to schedule interviews with like 50 or 60 people, not all of them are going to be able to make it. So there's some we didn't cover, and some were just pretty self-explanatory. But uh, for the majority of those things on there, if you're unaware of uh, what one of those things is, or you want to look for more information, um, more than likely we'll have a full two-hour interview talking about just that one subject. Um, so I guess next, some some methods of, of direct action have already proven their efficacy. Um, so they've actually increased personal freedom in people's lives. Um, some are also experimental, like Bonnie, that was done in the 60s and 70s, but uh, I don't know anyone else that's doing that. So obviously, uh, the laws that he had to avoid in the 60s and 70s, probably aren't the, there's probably a lot more today, so uh, someone will have to uh, test that one out. But all of it does have more potential than politics. And. It's worth mentioning that there's no mention of street protesting, uh, the anti-libertarian libertarian party. That's probably not, some people probably don't, probably don't like that, but I've called it that for years or for, for over a year now. Uh, or anything about the Constitution, because uh, none of those things really have anything to do with your own personal freedom. They really don't. <laughs> On the other hand, when it comes to direct action, we've interviewed so many folks, and their lives have been permanently changed, they've been improved 100% from, their, from, from just them conducting direct action. I mean, we have Pete Sisko on, who's a, a perpetual traveler, so he moves from country to country every 90 days, or, or around, that, around that time, and it's, it's changed his life drastically, um, and in a good way. I mean, there's been, we've interviewed a lot of people, and whatever, whatever thing they specialize in, it's definitely improved their lives. It definitely has. Uh, I'll mention this real quickly. Uh, Samuel Conkin in his 1985 debate with uh, Robert Poole, the founder of Reason Magazine. It's the only video of Samuel Conkin, uh, and it's actually on YouTube. And it was it was that debate. Uh, and there's also the thing of, of parasites versus producers, um, which I'm sure you guys are, are, are familiar with. Obviously, the political means are uh, more the parasitic, uh, <laughs> parasitic version. Ec economic means is, is obviously the producers. So I think that's important. And What's best about the FUDA is you don't have to wait around every four years or until Adam Kokesh gets elected. You can implement these things into your life right now. And there's no waiting. There's no waiting whatsoever. So, I guess to, to conclude, uh, direct action is the answer. Begging the Masters has never made the slave free. So. Amen. All right, and just the last thing here. Now, if, the, if this presentation sparked your curiosity, I do have the entire direct action series. Uh, for sale. It's over 40 hours of just direct action. I've cut out all the advertisements, all of just the, the fluff or the filler. Um, so everything there contain, pertains exactly to uh, uh, providing more freedom or creating the freedom you desire in your own life. Um, on top of that, um, I have uh, free uh, Freedom Failing Radio Network bumper stickers uh, that I'll give away. And I also have uh, LUA Volunteers Fusies for sale, as you can see. Uh, so, uh, if you're interested, come uh, find me after this. And uh, at this point, I already got some. You did? <laughs> yeah, you have two. Yeah. <laughs> so that's all I have. Uh, any any questions? <laughs> all right. <laughs> What's that?
100 points that you said for her list. Do you have that list someplace? Uh, yes, yes, I do. That is uh, on the on the website. It's a really easy URL. I can send that. I can send that to you in a message. Uh, it's libertyunderattack.com forward slash Fuda. So it's really simple. But uh, um, yeah, if, if you're interested in checking that, I can I can get you that information too. So, all right. Thank you guys. I appreciate your time.